staying in Dansville, New York, because of the curfew on the oversized loads movement. So basically, it's a day off. But you notice how uh, often you do more on a day off than you uh, more you busier than the regular days. Jeez, so I've been running around. Uh, first, I did my uh, laundry, and of course, you know, like every soldier knows, you sleep, eat, and do laundry whenever you can. And I didn't have much, but I go to the. They have a laundromat at this uh, TA there, and. I go there, I'm just trying to find a spot where there's no wind. Yeah, so I go there, and it's uh, 225 for a washer, 225 for a dryer, and I don't carry cash usually. So I go to the bank machine, and the fee is, uh, the fee is uh, 395. Let me, re let me repeat that, 395 to take the money out. So of course you don't take 20 bucks, you take 40, right? Um, and then I go to the counter. She gives me the change, like five dollars worth. So my pants stop falling off. Uh, and then I go to the laundromat. <laughs> and on the wall there's a big sign that says, uh, "New, use your debit or credit card to pay for the wash and, and dry." <laughs> and they have this little machine, basically like a like a card reader. And you can swipe your debit or credit card and indicate what machine you want to use, uh, what dryer you want to use, and you don't need any coins, so I just wasted 395. But that was not the worst part, because after I did the laundry, after I spent uh, two bucks on uh, powder and you know five bucks on dryer and washer, uh, I went back to my truck because I was not happy about this uh, this thing here. Because, you know, it's a big boom. Of course, it's not sitting on its own weight because it's hydraulics, right? So hydraulics supports it, but still, there's only one beam in there. You know, like the cross member, like somewhere here. And you see how my whole thing it buckles, you know? I know that's nothing. I know it, it will go up, but I'm just not comfortable with that. So I was trying to find some, uh, some wood lying around so I go behind the truck here see this is like a war zone area where people dispose of garbage and urine you know and exciting stuff exciting stuff like that and I discovered there's a perfectly fine river right behind the behind the truck stop so I could have just bought the supplies you know that uh, washing powder detergent I did my laundry for free in here, so total loss of money, you know. Oh, and I started looking for wood, and it's all rotten and it's all you know non-processed. Of course, just pieces of uh, junk that they will just fall apart. You cannot put a excavator boom on, no way. By the way, see how cleverly I positioned the the gooseneck. That's what's good about having a long gooseneck. So I moved the fifth wheel so that. It's right on the front axle. So, and these are 52 inches apart, the same distance between the lift axle and these. So, it's like a perfect tridom position. Otherwise, the front axle gets like 6,000 pounds only. And the next thing I did, very important, so my agent is going to be extremely happy. I found Rotella T6, ladies and gentlemen. Shell Rotella T6, full synthetic. And it's 5W40. And they didn't have pails, you know, those buckets. So I could have bought just two pails, probably five gallons each. So I bought, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I said, I said, what's the price? And it's like, actually, the sticker was there. It says $27, 27 US. And I know for sure it's Walmart sells it everywhere for 21. But there's no Walmart, there's no Walmart here. So I went to the counter. I said, uh, you know, if I give you... Um, if I buy 10 jugs, can you give me like a price match, you know? She says, uh, what price did you see? I said, $21. And she said, okay. So she gave it to me for 21 bucks each plus tax. It was like 230 bucks. Now in Canada, this was cost, this would have cost 500 bucks Canadian, you know? Of course that's Canadian, but still like two times more, like our 
our exchange rate is not that big so and these guys here the TA they don't have the my filters you know otherwise I would have done the oil change here and of course they don't carry this oil even though it's across the street is there right but they had some overpriced uh, DLO I think at 36 bucks a jack forget that so so basically my uh, engine is getting a new oil change before the cold uh, comes in and as I mentioned before this 5w40 that's the perfect uh, winter oil for Canada because it's good from uh, it stays uh, you know in perfect shape anywhere from minus 40 to plus 40 you know just what the uh, doctor ordered and the dash cam failed the first test you see it's over there on the on the windshield of the excavator because I wanted to show you guys how I was moving the uh, the uh, the stick and I replaced those uh, tiny boards with my massive three inch oak boards and now it sits perfect you know I like it very much it took some uh, finessing you know but I just used the right stick the right joystick just uh, raised the entire thing not just this not this part but the entire thing just you know so that I didn't want to disturb anything uh, put them uh, put them all in now I don't have to tie them down and edit some stuff in there and I checked all my chains but I pressed the record button on that thing see over here and it records for like four seconds and shuts down and of course I didn't plug it in because I was uh, charging it the whole night I went to bed and I left it uh, hooked up to the to uh, to my charger in the in the truck now, this is it looks okay like it looks actually pretty well made you know but I don't know just one guy actually I was watching in line one guy bought this one one trucker and then he said just not reliable and he uh, he took it back he still no wait he said he still kept it but he wanted to use it for I guess he's uh, 24 7 go to dash cam and he says it's just not reliable you know hey by the way this is what the operator seat looks like from the front through the windshield and I cleaned up the windshield, it was all dirty. I see those, those are the sticks, right? They control the movement, and those are two joysticks on each, uh, uh, on each side of the seat. Beautiful, and that's a display. Yeah, you see that white thing over there, the white uh, little panel? That's what pops up over here, goes up. And without it, if it's not up, if that uh, lever is not down, then you cannot have fun with this machine. No sir. Safety first. Alright, that's it. Oh and what else I did today? I did uh, lots of paperwork. I took care of my IFTA fuel report. I did my books, you know, profits and expenses for December. And no I'm not gonna talk about money. It uh, rubs people the wrong way and they start leaving me uh, bad comments I have I have enough bad comments already without talking about the money and what else did I do uh, yeah and I checked my route because they want me they don't want me they don't want me to go on I-90 I have to take some uh, backward roads I guess they think it's too tall but it's I don't know it's only 11 feet the machine itself but I love this beauty I don't want to give it to the consignee you know this would be such a great toy to have in your backyard, don't you think? You know, uh, all neighbors will be coming to you. You know, like, hey, Uncle Sergi, can you please dig me a forty-meter uh, trench? <laughs> oh, can you can you please clean up the snow in my uh, in my driveway? Hey, yes, sir, no problem. Just uh, you pay for diesel. I'll do whatever you want. This is such a great machine and by the way lots of people say hey hydraulics right all oh, hydraulics I don't want a low boy trailers with hydraulics this thing all runs on hydraulics you turn off hydraulics that's it it's gonna be dead 
So hydraulics has been around for like 200 years, you know? I think. And it makes uh, stuff so much easier. By the way, someone was asking me about the, how do I lock the gooseneck. That's how. See, there's a safety pin in there. Uh, and it's pretty, it's like a thick pin. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to show you guys. What they did yesterday, see? They installed this one. So they got rid of that stupid box. And they installed this uh, railroad type uh, <laughs> switch. So when it's like this and it's not gonna move anywhere. So this is uh, the air supply is closed. Nothing is going to that uh, chamber, right? But when I turn it this way, yeah, you see off, off this way, on that way. That's it, so Uncle Sergio is all set for uh, loading. I mean unloading. Okay, so what else can I show you guys? Oh, one, uh, my brother sent me an email. Uh, I sent him a picture and he said, well, that's a huge machine, but the, the chains look so thin. <laughs> so I sent him a picture uh, of my, you know, finger and the chain, just for, so that you guys know, right? So this is a half an inch chain and the branking strength is, I don't know, 10 tons, but it's uh, rated for 11,300, but when it's short, Short like this is good for approximately what five tons, basically. Uh... No, wait. So long chain when it's from one end of the trailer to another, like direct tie down, is eleven thousand three hundred. But you need two of these, like this one, because it's uh, this called. No, wait. This is direct tie down. Jesus, I'm all screwed up myself. So when it's hooked up to the load and and the trailer, that only counts as half of the rating. Right? So you need two of these to get 11,300. 11, but still, this is a massive chain. Each time I load, I get a pretty good wor workout. And these binders, you know, like after you handle these binders in this chain, and then I take this one, 3 8 and that binder, and I'm telling you, I was laughing the other day. I picked up that binder because that's a 3 8 that the red one over there. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, it's like 10 times uh, lighter. Anyway, that's it. 1080p, what I promised, last time I forgot to push the switch button, and I'm using my uh, smartphone Note 3, which has no problem recording on the battery power. So, sorry Cobra, you're going back to the store. <laughs>